الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته الى يوم الدين اما بعد so today inshallah ta'ala we'll be continuing discussing the book or starting to discuss the book uh, of uh, the aqeedah of ibn abi zaid rahimahullah tabarak ta'ala so in the last lesson we have discussed concerning matters pertaining to as a introduction to ilm of studying of aqeedah so certain points certain factors that one should be mindful of in studying concerning aqeedah so we mentioned some of those uh, points we'll continue uh, so today we'll start off by first just uh, concluding with that particular discussion regarding concerning points relating to aqeedah that one should be mindful of when in studying of this topic and of those things that one should be mindful of the ulama have clarified regarding in studying of aqeedah they mention qasahis manhaj ahli sunnah wal hadith fi taqrir masail al-i'tiqad so concerning that of those things there are those special features that distinguish ahli sunnah wal jama'ah regarding establishing matters of aqeedah so what are some of those points and those factors and those things that they use as a guide to ensure that they stay on point regarding study of aqeedah so of those things that are note, noted by ahl sunnah wal jama in studying of aqeedah one annahum yaqaddimuna al kitab wa sunnah that one that they give uh, uh, preference or they give uh, pre- uh, precedent to the quran and the sunnah in studying concerning matters of aqeedah so precedent is given to the quran and the sunnah regarding studying of matters of aqeedah also second that regarding concerning hadith that is used about the uh, uh, hadith that are used that they only use hadith to us, uh, that is authentic so matters in aqeedah they only rely upon authentic hadith as for hadith that is not authentic then they do not rely upon those hadith also regarding hadith that is authentic that while ahl sunnah wal jamaah that any hadith uh, they use any hadith that is authentic what that hadith is said to be a hadith al mutawatir or that hadith is good as ahad if the hadith is authentic then they will act upon those hadith regarding matters concerning aqeedah as for hadith al-da'if wal makdhub then they do not rely upon such hadith regarding matters concerning aqeedah also with ahl sunnah wal jamaah regarding studying concerning matters of aqeedah also that they also they give a lot of they uh, give due respect to the sahaba so regarding concern the sahaba that they're giving due respect regarding their understanding they take their take their views and matters concerning aqeedah they're also giving a certain uh, respect and also it have a certain, a certain position with ahl sunnah wal jamaah in clarifying concerning points regarding to aqeedah also regarding concern the matters regarding that they rely upon nusus which is muhkama so they rely upon nusus which is said to be muhkama regarding the text that they try to rely upon text that said to be very clear so the matters that are clear then they will uh, rely upon those matters regarding matters which is and the matter with the mutashabi and those things that are unclear then they refer back to those that are clear so matter that seems to be ambiguous those matters that seem to be unclear then they refer those matters back to those texts that give more explanation of those matters that seems to be not that uh, clear also ahl sunnah wal jamaah of those things that distinguish them regarding matters concerning uh, matters in aqeedah and nahum ba'idun that they are free from uh, having ghulu being over uh, uh, being extreme regarding certain people and also being very uh, relaxed and negligent regarding points concerning aqeedah so ahl sunnah wal jamaah that they don't go to extreme regarding matters of aqeedah so they tra- they take a point uh, uh, a path which is mutawassit so that's concerned the point uh, the matter concerned ahl sunnah so they don't have ghulu regarding pronouncing takfir upon people uh, that are not uh, warranted also ahl sunnah they don't make tabdiya upon people that is not justifiable and also tafsik upon people that are not justifiable so ahl sunnah they don't go to ghulu in being uh, very uh, relaxed in passing judgment on others without justifiable reason and also ahl sunnah wal jamaah regarding concerning also not ghulu that they are very uh, complacent in dealing with people of ahl bidah so ahl sunnah they're not very complacent in dealing with the people of ahl bidah so ahl sunnah take a moderate path regarding this matter in above what they mention bab al asma wal ahkam that they follow a moderate path and also ahl sunnah wal jamaah also that uh, in their uh, matters of aqeedah that also they are, they, they are not mutaassib towards any particular individual 
XM, so they don't have ta'asub to any of the imma of either sunnah, that rather they look at their views and they wait in accordance to the Quran and to the sunnah. So that's concerning of those points relating to either sunnah or jama'ah, and also they have a set uh, method regarding how they approach concerning studies of aqidah. So they have a very set approach regarding the study of, of aqidah. So they are people who are itirab, they are somewhat, they are confused. At times they are doing things one way, then do things the next time another way. You do not find the system with either sunnah, but they follow one set, straight, clear, transparent path regarding their study concerning aqidah. So that's concerning those things that we wish to add regarding that of those khasais, regarding the man of either sunnah wal hadith, regarding taqreer masal al itiqad. So with this now, we'll go into the second aspect of things, which is now discussing the introduction of the book that we wish to study. So the book that we have chosen to study is one of those books of the ulama of the past uh, in, that mention certain points regarding Aqidah. And the book that we have chosen, the book of Ibn Abi Zaid, al Rawan, Rahimullah, that uh, uh, in the introduction will mention about the author and also will discuss concerning some points that relates to the book. So we'll discuss concerning the point, the, the author and what is said about him. So we are familiar with the person whom we are benefiting from and also knowing the status of the person that we are benefiting from. Aywa. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. We start from page 21 about the author. Uh, the book is, name. The book name is the Aqidah of Ibn Abi Zaid al Khirawani, who lived in the year, was born in the year 310 and died in the year 386 after Hijra. His name and lineage. Al Dahabi said he is an he is the eminent Musa, Mus, Mustafa, the exegete and jurist, the role model and the highly esteemed scholar of North Africa, Abu Muhammad Abdullah ibn Abi Zaid ibn Abdurrahman al Nafazi al Qirwani al Maliki. So, as concerning the name, the lineage of the author, Rahimullah, that uh, he's from that region regard, we refer, we refer to as uh, uh, Al Maghrib al Qubra or Maghrib al Kibir, which includes concerning Morocco, Tunis. Algeria and also Al Andalus. So he's from that region uh, of the Islamic uh, uh, state uh, during that time, where it is referred to as. Uh, and now that year that he's from Al Qirrawan is more so located in uh, Tunis, is more so located in Tunis. Also, mentioned that he's Al Maliki of the ulama of the fiqh of Malikiya. Aywa. His birth, he was born in the city of Al Qirrawan in present-day Tunisia, in the year 310 after Hijra. So at the time of his birth, anyone? his upbringing, he sought knowledge since he was a child, whereby he later became known as the head of knowledge and possessed, possessed authority in this life. As Al-Qadi Iyad said, Qadi Iyad. Qadi Iyad said, students of knowledge traveled to him from all regions just to learn from his knowledge. And so his followers became numerous. His close students excelled in knowledge, and his superb scholarship in the Maliki Madhab could be noted through his authored books that have circulated everywhere, causing him to be known as the Young Malik, meaning he is the other version of Imam Malik. So he referred to as uh, Al Malik as uh, Sahir, showing concern his level, concerning his level of scholarship. So his level of scholarship regarding concerning understanding concerning that he referred to or compared that being uh, the smaller version of Imam Malik Rahimahullah. Aywa. His creed, as Zahabi said, he, may Allah have mercy upon him, was upon the way of the Salaf, the righteous predecessors, concerning the fundamentals of religion. Neither did he philosophize, nor celebrate, nor render the actual meaning of religious text. We seek success from Allah. So Al Zahabi Rahimahullah, that kind of somewhat mentioned regarding the manhood of, uh, of Ibn Abi Zayd rahimahullah, that of those who did not fall into tahwilat of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matters concerning al falsafa So he did not per se indulge in those things, showing that he was upon the way of, that uh, he continued upon the way of the Salaf al-Salah and was not affected by these uh, foreign ways of approach regarding matters in Aqidah. So regarding concerning tahwilat of explaining away uh, matters regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sifat and also al falsafa also this type of approach that uh, of Ilm al-Kalam that he did not enter into this. And that shows that something of his praise words in the ulama who is described as such. So the ulama 
who are described that they were not affected by ilm al-kalam and also by things concerning falsafa and also they were not uh, affected that uh, by way of tahwilat then it's something which is said to be praiseworthy in the ulama uh, amongst the ulama Aywa. his teachers he had the honor to learn directly from numerous scholars and exegetes the following list includes the name of some of his teachers Muhammad ibn Masrur al-Hajam Muhammad ibn al-Fath Al-Hassan ibn Nasr al-Bususi and many more. Aywa. His students, having the privilege of learning directly from eminent scholars while possessing superb skills in qualified, superb skills qualified his students to enjoy a high quality education. Some of the names of scholars and the people of knowledge who received knowledge from him are Abdurrahman ibn al-Ajuz, the jurist, Abdullah ibn Ghalib al-Sabti, Abu Bakr ibn al-Walid ibn Sa'ad al-Ansari, Abu Bakr Ahmed ibn Abdurrahman al-Khawilani, and many more. Oh, Khawilani? Okay. Hey, what's well, so those are some of his students who they have mentioned regarding with all of the ulama of that is uh, that. Uh, they are known concerning that uh, studied with others. And then after, they became people who people studied with. So that's concerning of those traditions that within concern Islamic science that it is known regarding who the person studied with, regarding those who are said to be his teachers, and also regarding those that after he have reached a level of proficiency in his skill, then others also will study along uh, with him. And those will be his students. So that's concerning Ibn Abi Zaid that uh, mentioning some of his teachers that he benefited from and studied with, and also after becoming a specialist himself, then people benefit from So he, they mentioned some of his students. Aywa. His works. He abridged the famous book, Al-Mudawwana, Kitab al -Iqt. So Al-Mudawwana is of those books concerning of the Aqwal of Imam Malik, Rahimullah. So Mudawwana by Sahnun, where they gathered concerning the Aqwal of Imam Malik. Uh, so uh, even Abu Zaid al Rawani, that of those who, and many others and others, who they summarized this book. So he was of those who uh, contributed to that book of Al Madawana of Imam Malik, Rahimahullah. Kitab Ijaz Al Quran. So, Aywa. And also another book, the introduction of his letter about Tawheed, which is included in his book, Al Risala Fi Fiqh Madhab Ibn Malik. So, Imam Malik. So, regarding concern, this other book regarding Al Risala that I mentioned regarding that uh, it's, a, it's a part of a book. So this book that is that will be studying regarding matters pertaining to the Aqidah of uh, Ibn Abi Zaid, that uh, he wrote a book that is called Al-Risala, and that book that was asked for him to, was requested for him to write regarding for the children to benefit from. So of those things that he included in this book that he covered concerning in the introduction, matters rel relating to Aqidah, as that said to be Fiqh al-Akbar, the largest, the larger Fiqh, where a person understand the proper creed of Ayl sunnah wal Athar. So he first started this uh, thesis this book that he wrote, that uh, explaining concerning the, the creed of Ayl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Then, second, he mentioned matters relating to Al Fiqh, that uh, upon the matter of Imam Malik. And then, third, he mentioned regarding things relating to Suluk, the Adab, and the conduct of the Muslim. So, he tried to ca capture three main areas in one book Aqidah, and that's the introduction, and that's what we'll be studying, and also matters regarding Fiqh upon the matter of Imam Malik. And third, matters regarding as suluk wal adab. Aywa. His death. Al Habbal said he passed away on the 15th of Sha'ban in the year 386 after Hijra, and some poets composed poems in his memory. So that's concerning a death, regarding concerning uh, Ibn Abi Zaid Rahimullah. A little discussion regarding time, but that's the more famous of the dates that he uh, died or the year that he died, as uh, stated. So that's concerning something in brief. Uh, relating to the author of this uh, thesis, which is the, the, the Muqaddima, which is the part of the introduction of the book Al-Risala by Ibn Abi Zayd al Rahimahullah. And this book is in print. This book it is in print. And you find many of the ulama of the Malikiyah that they have explained this book. So some have explained the entire book, as it's a book that they cite as a, a beginner's book, regarding uh, for as a book in uh, regarding the matter of the Malikiyah. So many have explained the book. Some have explained only the introduction, which is the, the part that discussing concerning matters concerning Aqidah. Uh, 
So you have a different approach regarding uh, explaining this book, but there are many that have explained the book, and this book uh, is of those books that is known as the book of the, the, of, uh, of the fiqh of the hand of the, the Malikiya, the matter of the, the Malikiya. And you find also contemporaries also have given attention to this book. So you find so the ulama of contemporary time also have explained this book. What you'll find the comparison between those of the past, many of those who have explained the book of the past are people also who came later, after Ibn Abi Zaid came uh, after, but also they were affected in some of what they mentioned in these explanations regarding Ilmul Kalam and also Tahwilat. So some of those who explained the book uh, regarding the section regarding Aqidah, of, uh, of amongst them, those who were affected regarding explaining away some of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also that they were involved in Ilmul Kalam. So kind of somewhat they moved away from the, uh, the initial objective and goal and the manhaj of the author and uh, added things that was not intended by the original author, who is Ibn Abi Zayd Akhir Rawani. Then uh, we find also of those who of contemporary times or the, those who have passed away of recent, who have also given attention to this book. So you find many of the mashaykh of contemporary who have explained this book. Uh, some of them have been in a form of a book, and many have explained the book in various uh, lessons that they have held. So you find the likes of uh, Sheikh Muhsin Abad, Al-Badr, the Sheikh of Medina, who have explained this book. Also we find uh, Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, who have explained this book, and it's in a printed form. Also you find the likes of Sheikh Al-Najmi, Ahmed Al-Najmi, who have explained the book in a printed form. She, uh, also Sheikh Al-Zaid Al-Madkhali, also have explained this book. And also we find uh, Sheikh Ubaid uh, and others who have explained this book. And it's in printed form. So you find of the contemporaries who have explained this book of uh, Ibn Abi Zaid, Akhir Rawani. That, uh, so you find uh, hey, many of them are Sheikh who have explained this book. So... Uh, Hey, so you find that uh, hey, Sheikh Al-Zayn, Al-Zayn ibn Muhammad ibn Hadi and Madkhali, and also Ubaid ibn Abdullah Al-Jabiri, of those who have explained this book in a book form, and also Sheikh Ahmed uh, and others of the Mashaykh who have uh, explained this book. So you find others who have explained this book. So those are just some of those that are in printed form, and others that have explained the book uh, of the past. So in short, Allah, that's concerning the author, and this book that is referred to as the Aqidah of Ibn Abi Zayd, Akhir Rawani, Rahimullah, uh, even though it was a part of an introduction to another book that is called Al-Risala. Aywa. So we discuss next concerning the one who have uh, explained, of those who have explained the book, and we have mentioned the, uh, the biography in brief of the one who have explained this book, who is Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi, seeing that uh, this uh, uh, explanation is also available in English, also available in English alongside with the explanation, with the, the original text, are mad enough, Ibn Abi Zaid, Rahimahullah. So we'll explain something in brief regarding the one who have explained the book, Ushik and Najmi, seeing that is a mention alongside with this print. Aywa. The biography of the explainer, Sheikh Ahmed ibn Yahya and Najmi. His name and lineage. He is the noble Sheikh, the Alama. The Muhaddith, the Faqih, Ahmed ibn Yahya ibn Muhammad ibn Shabir ibn Najmi Ali Shabir from Bani Humad, one of the well-known tribes of the districts of Jazan. So the bench concern is now first to start regarding the uh, the name of the the one of the one of explained the book, who's uh, a Sheikh uh, Ahmed ibn Yahya and Najmi of the ulama or of the Mashaykh of contemporary times who have uh, passed away the last uh, few years ago. So uh, they mentioned regarding that Sheikh Ahmed is uh, Ahmed ibn Yahya ibn Muhammad ibn uh, Shubir and Najmi. Shubir and Najmi. Aywa. His birth. He was born in the village of Najam Najamiya on the 22nd of Shawwal of 1346 one after Hijrah and was raised in a house of two righteous parents, which have no equal in comparison. Aywa. That's concerning where? His uh, birth. Aywa. His educational upbringing. He first read the Quran to Sheikh Abdul ibn Muhammad Aqil al-Najmi. Then he read the Quran to Sheikh Yahya Faqih Abbasi. 
who was from Yemen and who had come to Najamiya and stayed there. In 1360 after Hijra, Sheikh joined the Madrasa Salafiya and recited the Quran, this time under the order of Sheikh Abdullah al qirawan to Sheikh Uthman ibn Uthman Hamli. This was such that he recited the entire Quran to him with Tajweed and memorized the books. Tahfatul Atfal, Hadiyatul Ahfal, Tafatul Ahfal, Hadiyatul Mustafid, Thalathatul Usul, Al Arbaina, and Nawawi, and Al Hasab. And he perfected the discipline of handwriting. So it shows regarding Rasulullah that as for this madrasa, regarding that you know, the method of studying of Islam, that uh, for the Talib in the initial stage of his study, that in the early stage of his study, that he'll study certain basic mutun, so certain basic mutun, so there's a, a process and a system regarding the person studying of Islam. So, uh, and it's also a systemized system where the person will expect to study certain book from start through to the end in various science. So they mentioned regarding Talat al-Usul, regarding concerning matters regarding Aqidat al-Ibadah, uh, also, you study concerning matters regarding other sciences. So, of the general thing that the Talib al ilm that you study uh, initially regarding certain mutun over various topics. So, after the person become proficient regarding his Islamic studies in general. Aywa. Then he read to the Sheikh the following books Ar Rahabiyya. Rahabiyya. That's concerning in, uh, the laws of inheritance, al ajramiyyah concerning Arabic grammar, Kitab al-Tawheed, Balugh al-Maram, al-Bayquniyyah, Nukhat al-Fikhr, with its explanation, Nisfat al-Nathir, Nusat al-Nathir, Al-Waraqat concerning the principles of Fiqh, and Al-Aqidah al-Tawheed, Tahawiyya. He, he also studied parts of the book Al Alfiya of Ibn Malik and Ad Durur Al Bahiya, Bahiya. Bahiya with its explanation. That's by Concerning fiqh, both of which are written by Imam Al Shawkani. So, again, regarding that, and identifying and especially are clarifying regarding of those works that he studied. So for the Talib al-Im, regarding that uh, uh, one, studying with the Mashiach, certain mutun, so they have identified or mentioned some of those mutun that he studied with the Mashiach. So of those most of the mutun, and that, so mentioned at Kitab al-Tawheed, uh, Aqidah al-Tahawiyah, regarding uh, Aqidah in general, also regarding concerning uh, other books in uh, Mustala, so kind of somewhat uh, uh, Warakat, and different, different signs that he studied. So regarding the Talib al-Im, that, uh, and those books are like books that would be for the beginner level, motawasit level regarding study. So most of the books that are mentioned will be books that are here for the person who's in their uh, early stage of study or in their middle level of studying of Islam and its various sciences. Aywa. In 1364 after Hijra, Sheikh Abdullah gave him the ijazah to report from al Umahat al-Sit. The hadith books. In 1369 after Hijra, he studied under Sheikh Ibrahim ibn Muhammad al Amudu, Rahimahullah, the judge of Samita at the time. Of Samita. Of Samita at the time. Two books Isal al Mujahiti and the book of Sheikh Abdurrahman ibn Sa'ati, Rahimahullah. On fiqh, which is arranged in the form of question and answer, entitled Al Irshad Ila Marifat Il Al Ahkam. He also studied under Sheikh Ali ibn Al Sheikh Ziyad Al Somali at the order of Sheikh Abdullah ibn Qarawi. Qarawi. Qarawi, the subject of grammar, studying the book Al. As well as other books on grammar and morphology. Yeah, so the mention regarding, so the mention regarding uh, the author regarding of those things that he studied. So uh, uh, these are the books that will be studied with the person. Try to master these books and they will, come to the, uh, they will be considered that this is main books of reference. 
that uh, so studying these books, where a person will study these books, Thalat al Usul, Kitab al Tawheed, at Tahawiyah in Mexican Sunnah Akira, where a person have mastered these books and know very well what's uh, the subjects that are contained and topics that are contained within these books, and also books in fiqh, and also uh, books like Bulug al Maram, Adura al Bahiya by Al Shawkani, which is in fiqh. So uh, showing that the person, that these would be the person, books of reference, but you will master these books uh, and then build from there what will come after. So of those things that you mentioned that come after, you uh, get the ijaza regarding kutubu sitta, books of ahadith. So those are the things that uh, the talib al-im will be of the path regarding things to be studied and mastered. Aywa. His teachers. Some of his teachers are the following. Ibrahim ibn Muhammad al Amudi, Hafiz ibn Ahmed al Hakami, Uthman ibn Uthman Hamli, Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al Ali Sheikh, Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Ibrahim Ali Sheikh. Aywa. So that comes to the Muhammad ibn Ibrahim uh, Ali Sheikh, that was the uh, the Mufti before Sheikh bin Baz. So before Sheikh bin Baz, his main teacher was uh, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Ibrahim, Ibn Ibn, Muhammad Ibn Ibrahim, Ali Sheikh. He was also the Mufti, also he was blind. And then also that succeeded him was Sheikh Bin Baz uh, as being the Mufti. Then after Sheikh Bin Baz, then we had uh, Sheikh uh, Abdul Aziz Ali Sheikh at, at present. So that's concerning that uh, so Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Ibrahim, Ali Sheikh, also he was the one who started the University of Medina. So he was the one who started the Medina uh, of uh, the University of Medina with a general aim and objective of that University of Medina, which is most 90% of the students are taken from overseas, from very Muslim countries and non-Muslim countries. But they're taken, uh, the students are taken from various countries from all over the world, Muslim and non-Muslim country, where the intention is for them and the aim for them to come to that place to study. And also, upon their com uh, after the completion, for them to go back to their country and to teach what they have learned. So that's concerned the purpose behind the establishment of this university, Medina University. Uh, uh, so that's concerning the one who started the founder of that university, Sheikh Muhammad Ibrahim Ali Sheikh Rahimahullah. Then also he mentioned of his, uh, of his uh, that's the list of the teachers. So he mentioned of those concerning Sheikh bin Baz. He mentioned Sheikh bin Baz, Abdulaziz bin Baz. Okay. And the last of one of his teachers is Abdulaziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz. So those are a list of his teachers. So those are the office uh, teachers of those one that concern they mentioned regarding concerning Abdullah ibn Muhammad Qarawi. So Abdullah ibn Muhammad al Qarawi was the person who was considered to be in that region of uh, this, of that region of Saudi Arabia. He was the person I see as the Mujaddid, the one who revived the Sunnah and is uh, in that region where uh, ilm was somewhat scarce in that region, not Montashir, not. Uh, widespread so he came there and to kind of somewhat to bring back the people and to educate the people regarding matters concerning a tawheed or islam and uh, they mentioned that his dad was very successful regarding uh, uh, in that particular region so he referred to as one of those people who is of the mujaddid of that region regarding al-islam and sunnah Aywa. his students he has many students and from among his students are Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, Zayd ibn Muhammad Hadi al-Madkhali, Ali ibn Nasir al-Faqihi, and many others. So they mentioned regarding, of, they mentioned of several of his uh, main students that are more well-known, of his more renowned, of his students. So they mentioned Sheik Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, also one of the Sheikh from Medina, uh, and also one who has uh, ilm of hadith, and also that they mentioned Sheikh Zayd ibn Muhammad ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, also of his students, and Sheikh uh, Zayd, Muhammad al-Madkhali, also of those uh, that were very involved regarding educating of the people in that region. And also, I've authored many books, and the Sheikh Rahimullah also passed away. And Sheikh Rabia is still alive. Uh, then he mentioned third of those Mashaykh of his student, a Sheikh uh, Ali ibn Nasir al-Faqihi. So Sheikh Ali ibn Nasir al-Faqihi, that is more of a specialist regarding Aqidah. So he's more known to be a specialist in Aqidah, and also one of the, prof one of the professors in the University of Medina, or past Sabiqan, and also he taught in the Prophet Islam Masjid in Medina, and uh, Sheikh Nasir al-Faqihi uh, of uh, authored books and also of edited books uh, regarding uh, on the topic of Aqidah. 
And then also of his other more famous of his student, that is uh, Sheikh Dr. Muhammad ibn Hadi al Madkhali, Wafaqahullah. So, a Sheikh Muhammad ibn Hadi al Madkhali, uh, Wafaqahullah, is also one of his students and also one of the uh, prominent of those uh, Mashaykh that are also in uh, Medina and also teach in university in Kult al Hadith. Uh, so, that's concerning of uh, those who are his teachers and also of his student. His books. Aywa. The Sheikh has written many books, some of which have been printed and some which have not. From his books are Ta'asisul Ahkam Shahr Um Datul Ahkam. Yes, that's, a, that's an explanation of Um Datul Ahkam. So the Sheikh Hafidullah, or Rahimahullah, so more pro, um, Rahimahullah, that I've, uh, top, uh, I've done uh, books on various topics. So he has books concerning Aqidah. So you have explained concerning uh, Itmam Al Minna, Bishar Usul Al Sunnah, by Ahmed ibn Hanbal. That book is in print. Also, he has Al Fat, uh, Al Rab, Al Ghani, Bitaudi Ashar, Al Sunan, or Al Sunnah Al Muzani. Also, he has explanation of Ahiyah, uh, uh, Ibn Abi Dul Al Sidistani. Also, he has a book, uh, explanation of uh, Irshad Al Sari, Il Ashar Sunnah, the Imam Al Barbahari. So, he has books. Uh, also, this particular work that he has, which is Baluk Al Amani. Bishar Akida ibn Abi Zir al Qirawan rahimahullah. So he has books, also explanation of Lugat al Itikad. He has an explanation of Ta'aliqat al Atariya al Akid al Wasatiya. Also, he has uh, other uh, works that he has done. So the Sheikh is known to have done several uh, works regarding concerning matters regarding Akida and also works that he had done regarding explaining Bulugul Mara, Sar, Umnatul Ahkam, that he has a shar of Umnatul Ahkam that is in five volumes. So he has numerous works that he has done, uh, and also other works that he has done on various topics. Aywa. So that's concerning, so we'll go to what comes after. His death. After complications during a simple operation, he lost the ability to speak and would continue in and out of a coma. He remained confined to a bed for a year until he passed away on the 23rd of July 2008. May Allah have mercy on his soul and grant him paradise and make this work a source of benefit for him. So that's concerning that the death of the Shaykh Rahimahullah, that uh, due to complication regarding an operation, then uh, after then the Shaykh Rahimahullah that died, Rahimahullah, so of those men, the Shaykh was uh, known regarding that uh, spreading of Islam and teaching the book of the Sunnah, that uh, also he was known for Salamat al Mutaqad, that he was known for his uh, correct Aqeedah, and that uh, the Shaykh. Uh, uh, so he was, uh, and also every involved regarding teaching the Muslim and altering of books. So those are the things regarding that uh, have been mentioned here regarding concerning the Sheikh. Also, he was known to uh, that he was uh, that you know Haris ala itiba al Sunnah and the manager of Salaf al Salah. So he was known for those qualities. Anyway, so that's concerning what have been stated here regarding one the original author who is Ibn Abi Zaid al Qarawan rahimahullah, and then also the one who is the Sharah, the one who explained this book who is uh, Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So with that, we have now discussed those two uh, points. As we mentioned regarding the actual book itself of uh, Ibn Abi Zaid Akhir Rawani, Rahimahullah, that uh, it's a book that... Uh, uh, and we read what the introduction, we read also the introduction, what he has there. That's concerning. So we go into the introduction of the book as to what the author state regarding this particular book. What is introduction page? Is introduction. All praise is due to Allah. You so page number? 29. So that's the introduction. Page 29 will be the introduction of the, the author, Imam no, Ibn Abi Zayd. 36. 36. 36, the author's introduction. A1, page 20. 36. 36 is the author. Introduction. Awa. May Allah assist both of us and you in taking care of what has been entrusted, what he has entrusted us with and in holding to his legislated laws. You have asked me to write a small treatise for you about what is obligatory in the religion, those, those things that should be pronounced by the tongue and believed by the heart and done by the limbs, as well as to include therein the acts of sunnah related to the religious obligations, the confirmed, the optional, and the desirable, and to mention some of the morals and etiquettes re related to these. 
Moreover, you asked me to mention some key principles and derive judgments in jurisprudence according to the way of Imam Malik ibn Anas, and to add some points taken from the scholars well versed in jurisprudence and those who are learned in tafsir. You explained that for your reason for asking me to compose this treatise is the desire to teach these things to children the same way you teach them le the letters of the Quran so that their hearts acquire a sound understanding of Allah's religion and law at an early age to relinquish, to relish its blessings and bask in its grace. It's the author, uh, regarding the author, the original author, which is uh, Imam, Ibn Abi Zayd, that the open concern in his book of the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as mentioned, then also he states regarding the reason behind why this book was put together. So he mentioned that this book, that, uh, yeah, that he has compiled, that it, kind of, it covers three areas, matters regarding Aqidah, second, matters regarding Fiqh, but the Fiqh that will be mentioned would be upon the matter of Imam Malik ibn Anas, who is uh, Imam uh, dal Ijra, who is uh, Medina, so uh, as he was upon that uh, uh, Fiqh approach, and also that region is predominantly known for Fiqh and Maliki. So, yeah, so that's the second thing that he included in this uh, thesis. And the third thing regarding Suluk al-Adab, and also those things concerning the morals, also regarding the Adab, that the Muslim should be, uh, uh, that the Muslim should display in his behavior, in his act. So regarding to that, uh, so I can give the Muslim a rounded approach regarding Matters pertaining to Islam, matters regarding the correct Aqidah, second regarding the fiqh, as how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and third regarding the Muslim, how he behave and conduct himself. So he included in this risala those three main areas. Then also he mentioned regarding concern that you know, this is intended for children, for them to memorize, and for, be, and, and it, and for it to be taught, as they'll be taught concerning the Quran. So it's showing that, you know, that the, the child, that these things to be memorized, that them to hold to these things that are mentioned in this particular book. And also he mentioned that um, what he has mentioned here, also upon tariqat of the ulama, uh, meaning of the ulama concerning the ulama of uh, tafsir and the fuqaha. So the Muslim regarding what he takes as a part of his deen, then the people that we look to are the people of ilm. So the ulama who are known to be specialists in fiqh, the fuqaha, the muhaddithin, mufassirin. So those are the people that we look to regarding matters. So it shows that the Muslim not to ignore the aqwal of the ulama, not to ignore the aqwal of the ulama, but rather to use as a way of a light and a guide regarding how to understand certain things regarding Islam more clearer. So he wished also to highlight this regarding that this is something the Muslim should be mindful of and to follow the way of the Salaf, to follow the way of the, the ulama al rasik Then uh, Ewa. Having considered that, I decided to comply with your request out of the same hope of gaining for both myself and you of the reward promised to those who teach the religion of Allah or call to it. You should know that the most upright heart is the one which is the most retentive when it comes to absorbing goodness and that the heart most likely to hasten towards a good deed is one that has not yet been exposed to evil. The thing that the people of advice are most concerned about and which those who desire its reward most want is to put good into the hearts of the children of the believers so that it becomes firmly established in them and to make them comprehend what tenets, what the tenets of religion and the limits of the jurisprudence are in order that they may be satisfied with that and to make them realize that those things in the religion which their hearts have to accept and their limbs are required to do. So this shows regarding the emphasis is placed regarding that uh, for children, also for the youngsters, also to learn Islam. So a part to cultivate of the youths and the youngsters regarding that is for uh, them to be uh, to taught Islam correctly regarding concerning matter relating to itiqad, so clarifying the correct aqidah, also correcting regarding their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also matter regarding to their uh, behavior and conduct. So those are the three things concerning the dahi that he tries to concentrate upon. That a Muslim, he start the correct aqidah, also correct way of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and third, that a person also in his conduct and behavior that is upon the sunnah. So these are the things that dahi should always concentrate around those areas as this imam uh, uh, clarifying this to us. So you find that, uh, so something you find, so that's of those things regarding the dahi, that he always tried to make sure you know, what the, the message that he's communicating to the people 
that they revolve around correcting people Akida, not to top, completely dismiss covering concerning matters of Akida out of fear that he may be rejected if he was to discuss these matters. Also, he could discuss concerning matters regarding the fiqh of the people as how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly. And also, third, that clarifying regarding the Muslim, how he should be, uh, conduct himself with others. These are the things that the da'i, that he always try to ensure that those things are being covered. Anyway. Moreover, to impress upon us the need to educate them of what their hearts should believe in and what their limbs should act upon. For it has been narrated that teaching the Book of Allah to children extinguishes the anger of Allah and that teaching something to a child leaves an impression lasting that is indelible as the marks of a carving on a rock. So that's concerned that you don't have that impression that they try to leave upon the people that one that is permanent. Unfortunately, I find concerning those do what? That uh, the impression that they want to leave is that they can speak well. And they think that uh, and make it and, and talk about stories, but they do not per se uh, clarify the main things of Islam regarding Akita, regarding fiqh, and regarding the conduct of the Muslim. That at that if those if his dawah is not related to those things, then he's not doing his duty as he should. He's not fulfilling his responsibility correctly as he's not focusing and correcting the people Akita. So they can uh, meet Allah subhanahu with the correct Akida, and that they can uh, be upon upright and their heart is upon uh, correctness and also that their limbs, that uh, they worship Allah subhanahu wa correctly by knowing the, uh, the sunnah and the akam of Islam and also the person in his conduct and behavior that is able to can deal with people in the way expected by Islam which is the way uh, with uh, good conduct and behavior and upright morals. So the dahi that he always try to establish and to cultivate the people regarding these matters. Therefore, having said that, I included herein that which children will benefit from memorizing and attain honor for acquiring and shall receive joy for believing in and acting upon. And by the permission of Allah, it was related that the Prophet ﷺ ordered us to command our children to pray when they reach the age of seven and to discipline them should they be lax in it from the age of ten and to separate the, bo the beds of boys and girls at the same age, at such an age. Similarly, they should be taught before they reach puberty what Allah has ordained upon his slaves, be it an action or a saying, so that by the time they reach the age of puberty, Allah's commandments become firmly entrenched in their hearts, and they become well acquainted with them, and are able to practice them with comfort and ease. Indeed, Allah has made certain beliefs obligatory for the heart and certain acts of obedience obligatory for the limbs. I shall proceed. Hey, so the answer again, clarifying regarding concern for the, for the regarding concern Islamic education and educating people about Islam and calling people to Islam. That a person that he always try to uh, put emphasis regarding the persons is heart, which is matters concerning itikad. So clarifying matters concerning itikad to the general mass. Uh, regarding what are the things that they should believe upon or believe in based upon the book and the sunnah and also to clarify concerning how the person is to function how the person go about worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so clarifying those things regarding the heart and also the person's limb that's the other thing that da'i and the teacher that he tries to concentrate upon regarding cultivating the Muslim uh, so uh, and we said that if you find that da'i is not put the emphasis on those things then he's falling short in his responsibility I shall proceed to, ex to explain to you in detail all that I have mentioned in chapters so that they may be easier for those who are studying it to understand. If Allah wills, it is Him we ask for guidance and Him we ask for help. And there is no power or strength except in Allah, the Most High, the Great. May Allah send abundant blessings of peace upon our Master, Muhammad, His Messenger and His family and companions. So the author, Rahimahullah, then he uh, ended this uh, introduction by uh, sending a uh, salutation upon, or making dua, and sending salutation upon the, uh, the Prophet Islam and praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's how he ended this uh, introduction. So uh, that's concerning that, you know, you have a clarify of the, uh, why you have wrote this book together and what it's intended for, and also concerning that, you know, what he tries to clarify in this book. So the point that he wished to cover regarding matters concerning Akida, matters concerning Al-Fiqh, 
and also matter regarding Muslim conduct and behavior. So uh, this book would be uh, a summary of all those things that he had mentioned. And he said also, I give concern to that he have put the book in a form which is try to simplify how to uh, uh, pass on this information and all this information to be taught or to be gathered. Then he had mentioned to know that he have organized and structured the book in a particular way regarding chapters. So it is easier for the person to, to, uh, to memorize and also to, to study and to, to learn. So that, inshallah ta'ala, that will be the introduction regarding, we have covered regarding the, the Imam, Ibn Abi Zaid, also the one of the Sharah, Sheikh Al Najmi, and also the introduction as uh, stated here by uh, Ibn Abi Zaid, Rahimahullah. So uh, with this, inshallah ta'ala, we'll stop at this uh, point and uh, we'll continue regarding explaining this book uh, of Ibn Abi Zaid, Rahimahullah, that clarified concerning points relating to Aqidah. So of those things to uh, note that uh, this particular risala is not a book that was, writ was written separately, but rather is a part of a particular book that he wrote, which is a book that is called Al-Risala. So this is the book, a version of it, uh, that is Al-Risala al fiqhiyah You have many various prints uh, of this uh, book. So he discussed concerning matters relating to Aqidah, as in the first section, which is the Muqaddimah. Then he discussed concerning matters that relates to Fiqh, and then he, the third section regard, uh, he uh, clarify concerning matters regarding the Muslim in his conduct. So he discussed concerning the Muslim regarding uh, his conduct and behavior and those characteristics that is expected from a Muslim. So this is concerning uh, this particular thesis that we'll be studying. We'll be emphasizing or mainly studying concerning this, uh, the portion that covers concerning matters concerning Aqidah as for the fiqh and the likes, then uh, not to be covered, as we'll be mainly covering their section in Aqidah. And also the Imam, Imam uh, that what he wished to cover concerning the points of Aqidah, he didn't cover all the points of Aqidah. So he cover some of the points of Aqidah. And those points that he have mentioned are those points that are things, one, that are agreed upon between Ayl Sunnah wal Jama. Also the points that he mentions are points that... Uh, uh, that also that distinguish Ayl Sunnah wal Jama wal Athar from others. Also, he refutes regarding the approach of the people of Ayl Bida wal Ahwa, so that also to refute them. And also, he did not enter uh, regarding using terminology of Ayl al uh, Kalam. So, he avoid regarding uh, the approach of Ayl al Kalam. He, he avoid that approach as uh, that was not the approach and his manhaj. So that's concerning that uh, uh, this book in general also has the thing that he covers. He discussed concerning matter relating to Iman, Billah, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also he covers concerning matter that relates to, uh, so he will cover concerning the topic of uh, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cover that topic. Also discuss concerning matter relating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as sifat, regarding concerning al-istiwa, al-arsh, and matters of that uh, nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ulu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, he discussed concerning matter relating to Allah subhanahu wa speech, as mentioned, wa kallam Allah, wa kallam Musa, bi kalamihi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to me, uh, Musa alayhi salam with his speech. So he discussed concerning matter relating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and things that revolve, that relates to the topic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding his asma wa sifat, and also uh, matters similar to this. Then also he mentioned concerning matter regarding Al-Quran, kalam Allah, laysa bi makhluq, so also cover concerning to clarify the, the position of Ayl Sunnah wal Athar that regarding matters concerning the Quran, what's the correct position contrary to the view of Ali Kalam wal Bida? Nam. Also discuss concerning Iman bil Qadr, discuss certain points relating to Iman bil Qadr, belief regarding uh, destiny. Also he discussed concerning matters regarding an yakuna min ibadihi qawlan. Uh, then also he discussed concerning uh, matters regarding destiny. Also discuss concerning matters regarding some of the Anbiya, uh, regarding concerning ثُمَّ خَتَمَ الرِّسَالَةِ وَالنِّذَارَ نِذَارَ وَالنَّبُوَّةِ بِمُحَمِدِ النَّبِيهِ That also discuss concerning matters regarding uh, prophethood and the finality of prophet of prophethood. Also discuss concerning as-saha, matters regarding the final, the hour. Also, وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْهَثْ مَنْ يَمُوتْ That as Ta'ala also raised those who have died. So also discuss concerning matter regarding al-bath, regarding matter regarding uh, resurrection, 
also discuss concerning matter regarding al jannah wal nar so matter regarding al jannah wal nar and also matter regarding al shafa'ah regarding intercession of the prophet alayhi salam regarding al kabair also it will cover concerning uh, matters regarding al jannah wal nar matter concerning at uh, also Uh, so those matters regarding al-sarat, al-hawth, then also he discussed so matters regarding concerning of the affairs regarding yom al qiyamah then also he discussed concerning anna al-iman qawl, bil-lisan, ikhlas, bil-qalb, wal-amalun, bil-jawarih, yazid, bi-ziyadat al-amal, wa yanqus, bi-naqsiha. Then he discussed concerning the points regarding, clarifying regarding the matter of ayl sunnah wal-athar, regarding what they ought to be iman what they discuss and clarify concerning what is the reality of Iman, which is Iman as mentioned, he clarify uh, or define Iman as defined by the ulama of his time of Ayl Sunnah al-Athar and those before and those after that upon the way of the Salaf al-Saleh, contrary to the way of Ayl Bida wal Ahwa. Then also he mentioned regarding uh, and also matter regarding a takfir of others amongst the Muslim, what's the uh, matter concerning a shuhada points regarding the shuhada. So discuss concerning points of that uh, nature, then discuss concerning matter regarding wa anna khayrul qurun al qurun al ladina raha ra'u Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam wa amin bihi then discuss concerning matter relating to the sahaba. So discussing concerning matter regarding as sahaba, then also defining who the sahaba wa after the sahaba and who is the best among the sahaba regarding al khulafa al rashidun al mahdiyun Abu Bakr Thumma Umar, Thumma Uthman, Thumma Ali. So they are discussing concerning matter regarding the virtue of the Sahaba, which are important point regarding Ayat Sunnah wal Jama, and also he discussed concerning matters regarding that a person imsak amma shatara bainahum, the person to avoid discussing matters, the differences that uh, occur between the Sahaba regarding. Uh, so he discussed also what the Ayat Muslimin. Then also he discussed concerning what is the obligation, what is expected regarding those in authority. What is expected regarding those in authority? So he discussed that. Wa itiba as salaf al saleh. Also, he discussed concerning that uh, the person should follow the way of the salaf al saleh, and also istighfar lahum wa ikta wa ikhtifa atharihim, and also the person following the example wa tark al mira wa jidal fi din, and also the person should avoid regarding certain things regarding arguments, debates regarding matters concerning a din wa kullu wa tark. And also the person to avoid everything the people have innovated regarding a deen. So, so, and he ended with those points. So he ended regarding that uh, the person avoiding certain things regarding al bidah and the people of bidah and also things regarding jidal, uh, getting into arguments and debates amongst the people. So that's concerning of the, the general points that will be covered in this particular summary of the Akhida of Ibn Abi Zir, Ibn Abi Zaid, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So inshallah Ta'ala in the upcoming lessons, sessions, we'll be covering point by point some of these things that are mentioned. Uh, and as we mentioned, many of the Mashaykh have explained this book. Uh, so there's a book of uh, reference. And the points that he had mentioned are points that are known and established amongst Ayat Sunnah. Are points that are known and established amongst Ayat Sunnah al-Athar. So uh, finding concerning so, these points are nothing which is new, but already established, especially during that time. So with this, inshallah ta'ala, we'll end this introduction regarding the author, his bio, also the Shari, Sheikh Al-Najmi, and also the Muqaddimah, the introduction of the book of Ibn Abi Zaid, and also the, uh, the topics that will be covered within this book. So with this, inshallah ta'ala, we'll end here. Wa billahi ta'ala tawfiq, wa hadila sabil, wa la akhidah, wa alhamdulillah, wa alaikum wa rahmatullah, wa barakatuh.